Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And just to prove to you guys that we look at your comments, we are now maxing out the $300 Walmart PC. We're maxing it out within reason. We wanna make sure this thing actually works for a video. And I think we want some pretty good choices for the components. But before we get into talking about each part, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by GVG Mall, the online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. All you have to do is use the link in the description down below. Go to GVG Mall's website, use code TB20 to get 20% off of your purchase. Really easy to activate your Windows install, buy the key, you get the key, and then you can just throw it into your Windows install of choice, and boom, there you go. You have activated Windows 10 ready to go. So thanks again to GVG Mall for sponsoring today's video. So when Matt says that we're building this within reason, he basically means we're not going all out through the roof because we could have bought a 1050 Ti, but right now in the current economy, that would have set us back about $300, which was about the price of this computer. So instead we have a GT 1030 and some other really good components. All in all, after buying the computer and everything, you're gonna be into this almost $600 with all current pricing of things you can get right now. I mean, you are getting some pretty decent stuff, but is it worth 600 to have something like this? Not really. So let's go ahead and talk about each individual part, how it makes up this build, and then get to maxing it out. All right, so this HP, this is an HP Slimline. So this is one of their basically very small computers that is still upgradable because if you go any smaller than this, you're really not gonna have any upgrades. You're in mini PC territory, but this one, so you still have standard size components. So it comes with a one terabyte hard drive comes with a DVD drive, very essential in today's market. Um, it comes with a Celeron processor, which is a, just a dual core, no threading or anything. It is um, basically on their 10th gen platform. Um, so it does have an upgrade path. You can go to like an i3, you could go to the Pentium like we went with. Um, and it does you know, support up to the i3 technically, but you do only have 180 watt power supply. So you gotta be really careful about the upgrades you choose. Like if we went with an i3 and a Tempity Ti, it probably wouldn't work. It, it might, but you might get some black screens and blue screens and just Purple colorful screens, screens when RGB you're playing screens. Game. You might get RGB screens. Now the other thing that this PC really lacks is RAM. It only comes with a single four gig stick. So that's another thing we're gonna be doing is upgrading the RAM. It's gonna be kind of a weird number. It's gonna be 12 gigs, but it'll at least be running a dual channel, um, which is what we're going for. It does come with Wi-Fi. It comes with USB 3. It comes with a lot of really nice ports in the front. So. The main thing to kind of take away here is, you know, for $600, you're really not getting like the best bang for buck. And right now's market, it's not terrible though. I mean, we've definitely seen a lot worse. We did a previous Walmart PC where it was the same thing, but instead it came with the previous generation Celeron, um, which was slightly worse. I think this is like a 10% performance increase over the original Celeron that we used. But other than that, it's like the exact same system. Um, but before we used a 1050 Ti, and I think we did like 16 gigs of RAM, the system just really didn't make a whole lot of sense and it was really expensive back then. But now, like I said, this one's not terrible for the price. Now for the upgrades, which we're having second thoughts about. Um, this is the Pentium Gold G6400. We think it supports this CPU, but we don't know for sure. So there may be an audible to a different CPU at some point, but we're still gonna go for a Pentium regardless. This is a two core, four thread processor, a pretty decent upgrade over just the standard dual core. And the main reason we went with this over something like the i3 was that power supply, because we'd be really pushing it, even with the GT 1030, um, to make sure that that power supply can actually handle this level of components. So uh, yeah, we'll hope this is the actual processor we're gonna use, but you never know. Speaking of the GT 1030, this is a Zotac variant. The only thing you need to know when buying a graphics card for the small form factor builds is you need a low profile bracket. So your 1030s, your 1050s, your 1050 Ti, some other cards out there, just make sure there is a low profile bracket and then you can actually install it in these, uh, well, small form factor cases. And of course, the other upgrades, which are really easy to do is an SSD and RAM. This right here is an ADA to 240 gig SSD, very basic SSD you can get on Amazon, which of course links in the description down below, there'll be affiliate links, but you can slap this thing in along with the hard drive. I believe we have an extra SATA for that. Maybe, I don't remember, but we're gonna find out. Um, if not, yes, I, Jackson shook the camera, that's a yes. So you have a 240 gig to reinstall Windows on, get really fast boot times, then the hard drive for mass storage for games. So you have that going for you. And then last but certainly not least, we got another sticker memory. We ended up getting another eight gig stick because we forgot that there was only four gigs in here. We thought there was eight and we were trying to make a 16, but now it's gonna be 12, um, which is still better than eight. I mean, or four, whatever it was in there before. It's 12 gigs, you know, it's 
it's fun. Uh, just try to get the closest RAM speed you can to the one that's in the system. Um, sometimes you might have some blue screen issues because of RAM incompatibility, but we think this stick, uh, basic stick of looks like 2666 megahertz RAM should work perfectly fine. So how about not wasting more time, upgrade this thing and make sure it actually works. All right, so real quick, we're gonna go ahead and just take this apart. The very first thing we're gonna be doing is making sure that the processor works. So um, we think that this is 11th gen, but then I second guessed myself after I said 10th gen because I, I really don't remember anymore. I feel like it's it's an 11th gen Celeron. You guys will probably be looking in the comments right now and being like, oh, that's not compatible. And maybe this won't even be in the video, I don't know. All right, so <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and get this little nest of CPU cable undone from here. Uh, this shroud probably pinches off. Yep, just okay. like so. All right, now we can just take a flathead. Uh, HP does use Torx bits for like everything for some reason, but they all have flathead adapters luckily. What are you calling the flathead? I'm calling you pinhead. But this does give you full access to your um, Wi-Fi M.2. Gives you access to an actual M.2, which you know we should have gone with instead of a two and a half yeah. inch. I didn't really know it had that. Um, but like Matt was saying, you know, does it have an extra SATA? Yep, right here. It doesn't come with the cable, but it does come with the port that you need. And then you can also get access to a couple other things. We actually have a chassis fan <laughs> header there. So, you know, you want to add some extra cooling for your GTX 1080 that you had later on, go for it. Ooh, 1080, I like that. Nice. Spread. Actually, that's a, that's a good, they, they spreaded it well. All right, so um, we're gonna go ahead and wipe the thermal paste off. And Matt's an expert, so he's gonna look at the pins and tell us, <laughs> is there 1151 pins or 1200 pins? So what we were doing, because we're so lazy and we didn't wanna actually check, we were just comparing the processors and pin wise they look the exact same. And then if, oddly enough, I look over and see LGA 1200. So this is actually an 11th gen socket. So that's pretty cool. So you could put a 10-100 in this technically. Um, so maybe I did look up a supporter processor list. I just don't remember guys, planning videos, too many going on at once. So we're gonna take our nice new Pentium processor. And by the way, one of the reasons we went with the Pentium also was the i3-10-100 right now. Um, they honestly go for close to like almost $200 at times. And this one was about uh, 70 or 80, making it just a much better bang for buck because the single core and dual core performance of this Pentium Gold are almost the exact same as the i3. And realistically for gaming with a GT 1030, we're not gonna need much more than the single core and dual core performance. So let's go ahead and clean off our fan and we're gonna apply some new thermal paste. Um, you're probably not gonna wanna use the stock cooler because if we're being honest, this one uh, looks to be bigger and also we'd have to get this back plate off somehow, which would involve taking the whole motherboard out. So we're not gonna mess with that. All right, so now we're putting this back on. I just applied a little bit of thermal paste uh, since we cleaned off, well, you know, new processor so that obviously didn't have paste on it. Uh, we used some good old Arctic paste to try to get the maximum performance. And it's the 2021 model, baby. Now, obviously when you're tightening one of these coolers down, you wanna do opposing corners. Don't just tighten, you know, one down all the way at first because you're putting unequal pressure on the processor, which, you know, you could end up bending some pins or, you know, breaking something. So you just don't wanna do that. All right, well, on to the next step. All right, guys, now it's time to upgrade the RAM. You should know how to do this. Pretty simple, get the RAM stick out, open it up. Make sure it works. You know how you do that? You just, you know, smell it. Yeah, it works. Um, so as you can see, we have some mismatched RAM. So obviously this is gonna be awful, but jokes aside, this should work perfectly fine. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull these little tabs right here. And if it doesn't work, we're the guinea pigs. Yeah, we'll let you know. Pigs. We'll <laughs> let you know. I mean, you won't see it in the video if it doesn't work, aha. And push down and click, boom, RAM done. SSD time, SSD time. Okay, all you have to do to install the SSD is really easy. Um, we have the hard drive right here. This is a two and a half inch slot, so you can put a two and a half inch hard drive, but who wants to do that? Two and a half inch SSD, woo! You go ahead and slot it in like so. And then there's screws right there and the screws right there. Hopefully Jackson's focusing skills were on point. Easy peasy, use a fine thread screw. For those who don't know, Put that right there so Jackson can show the people what a fine thread screw looks like. Watch our PC build guide if you wanna know more about screws because we do a lot of screwing in there. So we're just gonna do uh, corners because, well, we're kind of lazy on this, but if you guys wanna be extra safe, put all four screws in. We got that one right there and right here. And every time I think of screwing something in fully, I think of Linus yelling at us for not <laughs> 
for constantly unscrewing and screwing the fans in and then telling us we could just use like corner screws. Yeah, he's like, just use one screw. He sets a bad example, you know? I know, you were almost done with the fans. No, don't say the fans. I wasn't touching the fans. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, yeah, no, this is totally not the fans that you guys are finally, finally working on. <laughs> and it's not the fans. We're, uh, we're not back to the fans, I promise. Okay, all right. All right, so we're gonna screw this in. And boom, look at that, that's pretty damn secure. And then we have, as I mentioned, an extra SATA cable and SATA power cable. So all we're going to do is go ahead and plug everything back that's up. And make sure you use the right one. Make sure you use the right one, this SATA zero. So um, how are we gonna do this? So, gonna... so when he said extra, he didn't mean extra. Oh, we yeah. We need to add oh, one. Oh, yeah, sure. All right, so that will be the SSD one now. So SATA zero, and then SATA two is gonna be the hard drive, because why not? Um, and then, Got that there, right, got here. So get a custom SATA cable, ladies and gentlemen. Now you could always steal the SATA cable from the DVD drive. If you don't use if it. If you don't want to use it, but you still- I would probably do that. Actually, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, um, you could you have it. an extra SATA power. So there's that, and they got the SATA powers, and then those just go like that, like that. There you go, look at that daisy chain technology. All right, so we're gonna shove, do the shove shove method. Do this side first. All right, sorry. Great, great, great production quality here. See these little little notches right here? You can put these in there like that. Then shove, shove the cables. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll deal with the CD drive later. Push down and boom, locked in. Um, I guess I'll just go ahead and put this back in. This is the part where I basically stared at this for like an hour and had no idea what I was doing. But what you're gonna do is make sure it's flippy flip like this. Slide it back in from the front. It does the click, and then just plug it back in. Super simple. You gotta have some really tiny fingers to do this. I'll be totally dainty. honest with you. As I said before off camera, dainty fingers. Um, but after this, I mean, what am I doing? We didn't even install the graphics card. I just put yeah, all that yeah, back I, together. I, I figured I'd. But it, it's yeah. fine. He can still do the GPU without that, you know? I think I can do it without taking that out. He thinks. If not, all this is I'm for naught. I'm pretty good. All this is for naught. I'm a professional. Boom, we're done. All right, so let's go ahead and get our Zotec card unboxing. You know, I'm gonna need a knife to open this. Oh, we haven't used this bit, yet. Uh, it's, it's honestly just, it's a little bit hard for me to open without a knife. So there we go. All right. So now, we're gonna go ahead and open this. Uh, it might come with the low profile card installed, it might not, or sorry, bracket. Um, sometimes they come with the full size card. Anyways, because a lot of people do uh, question, it's a long boy, um, what exactly is the difference between low profile and full size? This is a full size PCI lane, notice, it will n absolutely not fit. This is the bracket that we need, and you know if you do notice, it will absolutely fit. So, let's go ahead and get this off. Um, this one requires a little bit more specialty um, because you do need to use a Phillips and then you're going to need either pliers or I believe that's like a, uh, got like a 3 16 or 5 16 I don't know, it's, it's, it's a weird like socket size, but I recommend just using pliers because you probably have channel locks or pliers or something like that sitting around at home. So as you can see, needle nose pliers, it's going to work fine for this case. Make sure you get a good grip on it and then spin. And you should be able to do the rest. Save that full size bracket for later because if you ever want to sell this card, I see these all the time on eBay and they only come with one of the brackets and it drives me nuts. I don't get why people save the box, not the bracket. So this guy right here literally just pulls open and uh, you know, it's a nice tool, it's designed. So here's how we can do this without taking this out. You just slide the back in first. Um, make sure that this lines up. It's a very tight fit last time I remember, so. Yeah, because the front, so here's where you're gonna run into a little bit of an issue. You need to get this behind the uh, the PCI cover. And that is not easy, my goodness. That was my problem. Yep. Ah, it's in. Uh, this does come with just an HDMI and uh, DVI. The other one was HDMI and DisplayPort. So, you know, you get, you get different things with different options. So, uh, the last step then would be to go ahead and put this back on the side panel and then I think we're ready to, do some benchmarking. How much better do you think this is gonna be? A lot better. Yeah, I agree. I know before that uh, that Celeron, uh, what game could it run? It could run Valorant, but you were getting like pretty stuttery, like all over the place experience. Um, Minecraft? In Minecraft, it could play Minecraft. Like, can't complain about that. But if you want more frames in Minecraft, you definitely get more now. Yeah, if you wanna do any card. kind of mods, shaders or anything, you're definitely not gonna do that without a nice graphics card upgrade, running dual channel RAM. And uh, I think it's time that we go ahead and test that out now. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this Walmart PC upgraded and ready to go, let's talk about some benchmarks real quick. Now we decided to test this PC in a couple of titles, those being Fortnite, Minecraft, Valorant, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now we are not gonna totally stress this PC because again, guys, it is using a Pentium and it is using a GT 1030. And the fact that, well, I know a lot of you are probably saying this isn't really maxing out this PC. Well, in our opinion, this is maxing out the PC to the best of its abilities due to the power Power supply limitations yeah we could have picked up an i3 slapped it in there and had the thing like turn off constantly because we were well maxing out the power supply but uh, well we actually wanted to have a video that we could put out on the internet so we decided to go a little bit modest but still giving this thing the best chance to perform and in Fortnite we start to see where that CPU upgrade actually benefits us we do get over 60 FPS on pro settings but that CPU is still the bottleneck now, of course, it is the bottleneck intentionally because we are running on pro settings, which makes it a much more CPU dependent game. Therefore, that old Pentium is just trying its best to uh, push Fortnite to as many frames as possible. And getting over 60 FPS is still pretty impressive on a system like this. Is it worth the money after all the upgrades? Most certainly not. But for the sake of this video and for the sake of entertainment, it can play Fortnite at over 60 FPS and that GT 1030 can actually, well, keep up a little bit. Now, of course, with Minecraft, Minecraft being, well, Minecraft, it is super easy to run, 100 plus FPS, no problem whatsoever, no bottlenecks at all. This PC could run Minecraft before the upgrades. It would work on the Celeron. It wasn't great, but it would work. So you can easily play Minecraft on this PC with the upgrades. GT 1030 and a Pentium is perfectly fine for Minecraft. So if you do have this PC for that and you want to upgrade it, go for it. You'll have an awesome gaming experience. Next up in Valorant, we do get an even better experience also. Unfortunately, I did have to play versus bots because using my Valorant account to benchmark has left me in a uh, well, little bit of a pickle where I can't go into games because I leave early all the time. So yay, fun stuff. But versus bots, we got over 200 FPS. So take it with a grain of salt. I do expect well over 60 FPS even in an actual match, but for the sake of time, I had to go ahead and fight some bots and well, there you go. Now for the sake of maxing this thing out, we are going to test Shadow the Tomb Raider on low settings and prepare yourself for a slideshow 21 FPS average on low settings at 1080p. Not a great experience. If you're going to play games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, you most certainly are going to want to lower down to 720p, um, but then you might have a bottleneck with the Pentium, and it probably won't improve things all that much. So overall, I mean, this PC is, well, it, it's at its limits. I mean, in theory, we could have tried for the i3 and something like a 1050 Ti. That may have worked, but it still probably would have had some issues with that power supply being a sub 200 watt power supply. So we were kind of limited on what we could do. So you can't upgrade this thing to be a gaming PC. Is it going to be a great gaming PC? No, but it can definitely play some lower end games. And if that's what you're looking for, you may want to consider this. Now, I'm going to be totally upfront in saying if you don't own this PC right now, don't go out of your way to go buy it and then upgrade it because the value for money just isn't there. But if you do already own this PC, let's say it's an office computer or let's say, oh, I don't know, your family bought this for you thinking it was going to be a gaming PC and you had to upgrade it. We've all been there. Then, yeah, maybe consider doing that and go ahead and do it because I think it would give you a pretty decent upgrade for the amount of money you're investing into it. So now that we finished the benchmarking section of today's video, how we're gonna bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. All right guys, so this PC actually turned out a little bit better than I thought it would because the GT 1030 is really not that great of a card, but when you pair it with something like this dual core and four thread pin team, it kind of makes sense. Overall, it is a interesting use case. If you did start out with something like this and you want to upgrade it, then yeah, I'll go for it, do it. Make some awesome performance gains just by spending a little bit of extra money. But is it worth picking this thing up and then upgrading it right away? Well, I don't know, it depends. There are some other options on the market, but given the state of the PC hardware market, it is still really hard to find something around $600 so this might be something to consider if you do want to pick this thing up or any of the upgrades link in the description down below they will be affiliate links and they will help us out so we hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you haven't already don't forget to check out our other two youtube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one goodbye so hey in case you guys didn't notice we have all kinds of social media from tiktok to instagram to facebook to twitch to twitter to who knows what else Link down below. There's a bunch of links. Click them. You'll enjoy them. Goodbye.